Hey guys, it's Margaret, and today I'm bringing you a video about how I come up with ideas and designs for Merch by Amazon using PicMonkey. So the first thing that I do when I am thinking of researching a shirt is I will check out one uh, merchresearch.com to find out if there's already if that if that category is already just saturated. So let's take a look merchresearch.com. And here I will type in subjunctive. Subjunctive mood. Okay, so I see zero shirts in subjunctive. I'm going to go do another search about um, like linguist. Linguist. Um, because somebody who is, yeah, trust me, I'm a linguist. Here we go. How many shirts? Seven shirts to do with being a linguist. Now, this one has got a fair, um, you know, grammar police. Okay. Some of them, you know, have no ranking or, and, and again, this may be a total flop, but I'm willing to try going into that, um, that niche. Why not? So here again, subjunctive, there's nothing. <laughs> subjunctive. Uh, so then another thing I like to do is type in a Google search with what I'm thinking of doing to see if there's just something else out there already as well. Um, so I'm in a subjunctive mood. Like, let's type that in. And then I'll click on images just to see if, just to see. Okay, so look, here I see a mug and I see a shirt. Okay, interesting. You know, I'll scroll through to see if I get any other ideas or snippets of things that I might be able to take an off shoot of in the shirts if I want to do something else. Okay, well now I'm going to look at this because I want to make sure that I'm not taking somebody else's idea. So, okay, this is on Cafe Press. And so somebody else has got like a grammar type thing, which is cool. So I'm just going to, well, I don't see the shirt I was looking for. I just want to be real careful that I'm not um, copying somebody else. And again, you can always make it different, make it your own. Anyway, okay, so I that was not the style I wanted to do, so it's cool. Um, and another thing that I want to check out is Trademarkia. Just to see, like, make sure I don't go down this rabbit hole and then suddenly it's like a trademark phrase or something. I'm in a subjunctive mood. So there we go. And I, you know, there's no trademarks for it. Okay, but you know, you want to make sure. I'll also do this when it comes to creating my description and all of this kind of stuff. So um, I'm going to look at text-based shirts just to see if there's a layout that I like um, to go with. Generally, I do things pretty simple. I don't get really, I don't do a lot of fancy like this. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's just... I get frustrated and I can't do it. All right, I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna go see what I like. And let's go to PicMonkey, here it comes. So I go to PicMonkey and again, disclaimer, I just wanna say, I know that the probably better way to create shirts is with Adobe Illustrator. I am not even a beginner. I can't even begin with, with Adobe Illustrator. My husband is really good at it and would love to teach me more, but he works like a dog. And so it's hard for us to get time to work on merch shirts. So I have to use with use what I know uh, with the time that I have. And so far it's worked, it's worked okay for me. So I have no complaints so far. So blank canvas, and then I come over here when it loads, and I'll select an eight by 10. Because it's sort of the shape of the front of, you know, the shirt where you'll put your graphics when you start um, uploading. So first thing I'll do is you have to remember, like, when I look at this, the, the collar of the shirt, generally I pretend where this, like, gray, gray bar is. There's a little bit of a drop before the image starts. So I don't like to start way up here at the top because I don't want, you know, your, your shirt design to start up here. Um, and then also... I don't usually take up the whole space because I one of the first shirts I did, I did that. I made, I made it big and then I got it and I was like, whoa, this is like ginormous. And, you know, some people may like that, but I'm more of a keep it, keep it in the chest area. <laughs> Generally, depend, I mean, depending on the style of the shirt and all of this. So, so <clears throat> let's add some text. 
Um, here we go. Add text. I'm going to keep it really simple. <laughs> I'm just saying. And I'll type it in here. Move out of the way. So I'm in a subjunctive mood. Now, here's what I'm thinking. Is that going to bother an English person that subjunctive and mood are capitalized because it's not proper? So I am going to look back. Hmm. I do I want to chance it? I'm in a subjunctive mood. If maybe if I took that period off, or maybe I make a few different ones, you know, I'm in a subjunctive mood. I ha I really have to think about this. If you were a stickler, you would probably not want it capitalized. So let's go without. And maybe maybe I do both. Maybe I go maybe I go both ways and see which one's a hit and which one's a a miss. Okay, so there's that. Now, I have to decide um, how I want to, okay, because here's my thinking. I, when I'm designing this shirt, I like, you know, if I have it just like this, it's going to be small. Like, it's going to be like this on my, on the front of my shirt. So I'm not sure I'm going to keep this layout, because if I make it much bigger, like this is going to be across the chest, and then here, this is going to start being, you know, if it's a girl wearing it, I might be tucking underneath <laughs> or something. So... I generally, you know, want to keep it in this area, like so. Now, what I do to make sure it's centered, you see these little circles along the edge? I'll slide this over and line it up where the edge of the paper, or the edge of the supposedly paper, um, cuts right through the center. So now I know that's um, centered in the middle of the, of the page. So, all right, I'm going to play around with this, but let's change the font up a bit. I like to make sure, one, that my font is um, big enough to read and that it is in a, a, a font, you know, that is easily read, if that makes sense. So I don't want it to be something that is going to require somebody to come and look at the shirt and say, what does that say again on your chest, you know? So it's going to be easily distinguished I guess you know like some of these like so the letters are tiny and skinny and they're smooshed together like so that all the letters are kind of smooshed together so it'd be really hard you know to from a distance well for me so I just want to make it easy to read easy and then also something I think about is some fonts and again, I am not a graphic designer. I have no background in this. But personally, when I see certain fonts, some fonts seem more feminine. Some fonts seem more unisex. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know if the guys that that are in that know this kind of stuff can can verify this. But when I create shirts, I try to make sure that the fonts that I use, if, especially if I'm expecting it to go to a broad, you know, male or female. I try to either make sure that they're unisex fonts or more masculine fonts because I'm thinking if I chose a, a feminine font, a dude might not like it. You know what I mean? I, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, so, you know, like, no, I wouldn't use that. Generally, I'm not going to use cursive, but, you know, here's a cute font, but it's definitely more of a feminine type font. Uh, same thing here. I'm not going to use cursive, but I, I think you get what I'm saying. I'm trying to, I was trying to find one that was, it looks like a normal font, but it's got a feminine edge to it, you know? So, all right. Well, I could just sit and scroll that one for sure. Cause it's got hearts and stuff. Of course it's not popping up now. So yeah, you know, it's got hearts and things and swirls, but no, I'm not going to use that. Um, and I, I, I like this font. I've used it on a couple shirts. It is a bit harder to read, but I've only used it on shirts when I've got like one word and it's a bigger word um, and maybe a bit of text. So uh, let's take a look at this Roman antique. That's a maybe, but I don't know. So this is what I do. I just flip through and I'll, I'll see if I see one that kind of jumps out and looks right. I, I don't do, here I'm going to show you this one. I don't do fonts like this. I don't do drop shadows because it's going to make 
the text easier, I mean, uh, harder to, to read, especially from a distance. So I try to keep it really simple. That one's okay. That kind of looks all right. I'm in a subjunctive mood. So I might do something like this. I might also pull this up. Um, and so like here, I'm seeing this and I, I might want more space between my lines. Um, and let's see if I can do this with my effects. No, this is more like on the font uh, effects, which I don't want. But I think there's a way to do this. Um, no, it's not that. <laughs> go back, go back. Okay. So when I can't figure it out, but I'm pretty sure there's a way, because I know I saw it before. Um, what I will do is just break these up into different lines. So I'll take this off. Um, and I will, you know, add another text line and drop it in there. I am trying to drop it in. Here we go. So again, I'll take this, bring it up. Well, this will give me a little more freedom to put more space between these two lines. And I mean, there's another way to do it where I can, you know, drop a line and, you know, just, let me show you that way too. Hang on. I'll come back and try and do the other way if I don't like it. So another way that you can increase the space between the two lines, because I think these are really smooshed together and I want to see, be able to distinguish the lines a little easier, um, is to, you know, put a space and then you've got this giant space. That's not good. So I've got these giant spaces and that's bigger than what I want. So what I'll do is I will come in, select this line, and then come over to this window where it's allowing me to edit my um, text. And where it says size right here, I'll just start dropping it down. And I'll slide this over till it gets to a point that I like. So maybe like that. And now I see 336 is what it's at. So I'll copy that. I'm selecting Command C on my keyboard. And then I'll come down here to this line and I'll drop that in as well. Let's see if that took. Okay, it, might, it probably, okay, no, that's not 336. This is 134. <laughs> Try again. So here we go. And V, so I, I did Command V, which is paste, and drops, and it brings it up. So that looks a little better to me. Another way that I was going to show you was, you know, taking each line on its own, and then you can just manually move it around. This way you know exactly, okay, it's that specific, um, spacing in there. So I'm in a subjunctive mood, the end, right? So now what do I need to do? I need to make sure, and I know this is not like, woo, this shirt is amazing. Uh, this is just, you know, an idea. And again, I may, as I'm doing more, when I go down that rabbit hole of researching more linguist type shirts, um, find, oh, I could throw in this kind of image. You know, I could throw in you know, what, what would, you know, it's a, a, a could be, a should be, what could have been, what would have been, you know, what kind of image or clip art would look good, would fit with that, you know what I mean? So, but for now, I'm going to leave it as, as it is. I'm, I don't know, I'm not in love with the font after all, maybe. So, Smash is what I got here. Let me just flip through some of the other fonts and see if I like anything better. No, those are too smooshed together. I won't like that for this. Um, no, and I won't use like this one because this other one, it's got a um, like a drop shadow. It's too much. Uh, this one, meh, meh. No, too curvy. This one's kind of like a feminine type. And I don't generally, I mean, eh, no. <laughs> so, and this one, this one will be too, I mean, that one looks kind of neat though. That one looks... I wish I had a bold, you know, some of them have like a bold, hmm, I'm trying to decide if I like that or not. I wish it were, because some of these thinner um, texts, fonts, you you can select the bold on it. I kind of like that, but I think it's going to be too small, right? And then if I make it like that, well, maybe, let's play with it. So let's bring this down to get it get it closer. I'm in a subjunctive mood. What are we at here? 189? No. Yes, 189. 48. <laughs> so I'm gonna come make this this line 48 as well. Let's see if I like it. 
Let's see. No, oh, maybe I like that. Okay. I'm just thinking, you know, if I'm an academic, which font would I like more as an academic? I kind of like this font. So, all right. <clears throat> We'll see. I, what I'll do is when I put it on the shirt, I can decide, like, do I like that or not? Let's do that. So before I do, I need to make it um, transparent background. <clears throat> Pardon me, because these shirts have to have a transparent background. So I'll come up here, these basic edits, come to canvas color, and select transparent. Now it's transparent. Apply, and then save. And I am saving, and I'm just going to put SM for subjunctive mood. Save to my desktop. And then when I come over, there you are, you're hiding up there. I open it like this, and again, I know that this is not the proper way. And there are ways to do this where I can drop it into Adobe Illustrator and correct the size, but this is the way I do it. I'm not saying it is the best way, it's probably not the best way, and it's not necessarily the right way, so um, yeah, just letting you know. I know if you're going to fuss at me, I know, I know. So I go to tools, I, when I open this up in preview, I go to tools, I adjust the size, because it has to be 4500, unselect that, deselect that, and by 5400, and then the resolution has to be 300 dpi. I know, it's not the best way to do it. I know, I know. So, but my lines still look pretty good, I think. I mean, when you scale it and all that, everything looks okay. It's fine. So now that's done, I'm going to save it. And I'm going to come to Merch. And so I can see what the shirt will look like when I place it. I don't close out Pick Monkey in case I get there and I'm like, eh, I don't like that. Um, so I can just come back, change the font, change the size, whatever. So let me pull up Merch. Here we have create the new design. I am selecting upload and the shirt that I have created. Generally I'll have all four ready to go because I'll vary them or change the, the color or I'll have generally two because I'll do the inverse as well just to see which one sells better. So here we go. I'm in a subjunctive mood. Okay. You know, it's okay. I think I like it all right. The font looks okay. It's easy to read. All right. So here's what I'll do. I'll come back over here to editor and I want to do the inverse. Sometimes I do just stark white and sometimes I'll give it kind of like a creamy yellow color depending on my mood, I suppose. So here I'm just going to do straight white. I will save, save it out. So SM subjunctive mood white, save it. I have tried changing the dimensions here and, and it doesn't, it doesn't allow me to do it the last time it didn't so anyway so there's that I need to come over click this and then oops let me get back on preview where'd you go anyway and I'm going to edit the size again then I will come back so I have these two uploaded here so I've decided I'm going to go ahead and create one with a an image as well so before I start, let me change this canvas color so I can see what I'm working with. So here we go. I'm in a subjunctive mood. And generally, subjunctive moods have to do with thinking and thinking about things and you know, how they could be, should be, whatever. So I'm thinking like a brain or a thought bubble. It has to do with contemplation, right? So I might, let me, let me come over here and look because I know there are some thought bubbles in here and pick monkey. Let me come down and look. So here's some comic bubbles I can play around with and see if, oops, I don't want two, I just want one. If I want to add something like that in, sometimes I'll just drop the font down, the text down, and throw a little image up top. I wouldn't want to keep it like this, so down here I might change the colors. The black color I'll probably change to white. And then this outline I'll change to black or transparent. How about that? So that whatever color shirt it's on, let's say I wanted to have it on a blue shirt, the thought, you know, it'll look like that. So, I mean, this is not my favorite, but it's, it gives you an idea. So there's that. 
And let's say I want to go look for a little brain instead. Where would I go look? So I will come over. There's a couple of sites that I use. One is um, Graphic Stock, which is a paid site. And, oh, I can't remember how much it costs. But you can download for commercial use. And let's say I want to look for a brain. <laughs> Brains. But this is not, you know, I want something that's a vector image, and I want something that's more like of a clip art. So, oh dear, look at this guy. <laughs> um, so I'm not seeing what I really want. I mean, yeah, these guys have a little light bulb going off, which is an eye, you know, could be just a little light bulb. This dude's pushing a brain. Um, I mean, the light bulb to me, it, it stands more for I have an idea. Uh, subjunctive is more of what could have been, what should have been, that sort of thing. I don't really see what I want here. So let me look on um, Open Stock. Open or Open Clip Art is another one I use. And this is a free um, clip art site for commercial use. You have to be careful because some things that they put up there, even though you can use this clip art, you can't, you can't really. It's like a picture of Nemo. Or, so just be careful. So, brain. Let's type in brain and see what we see. I mean, for me, I'm looking for something like this that's just really simple. I don't want anything. I want it to match. This brain is a possibility. Look at that brain notes. Okay. I, I want to make sure that whatever image I choose, it matches the font and the, the theme of what I'm working with. Um, brain silhouette. I don't like that. <laughs> I may not like the brain idea after all. So I, it just kind of grosses me out. But it's not for me. But, <laughs> I don't know. So I may just still stick with that thought bubble, um, contemplative sort of thing. So yeah, but this is what I do. I'll just kind of go through and look at what's out there. So I'm starting to move away from brains and more into other things. Hmm. Yeah, this is, this is what I do, though. You asked, I answered. <laughs> brains. Okay, okay, okay. So <laughs> let me go back over here. So... This is probably, you know, the set, what I'll keep it with right now. So I'm in a subjunctive mood. We'll just see how it does. And it may not do anything. I just thought of it today, so I said, let's go with it. Let's go with it. Um, but let me let me point out to you before I do this. If, if my text was something like this, it's not, I wouldn't probably use that image of a, a thought bubble because I try to make sure that whatever clip art I use, and again, I'm not a graphic designer. This is just my personal preference. I want to make sure that the kind of lines that are used in a an image or a clip art match what I'm going with, okay, come on, with my um, text. So, this is, you know, maybe not the best example of that, but, you know, let's say I had some curvy text or something, or some text that had some, uh, like the pencil one, where it's, you know, distressed looking, but then my image has very clean lines. I mean, unless that's a very specific look you're going for, I generally don't. You know, if I'm going with things that with clean lines, I make sure my, my image and my my text match. Um, if it's something with a distressed look and I want to keep it with that, I make sure that my um, image matches as much as I can. So that's just, again, a personal preference. So <laughs> going back, looks okay. I want to make sure my image here is centered. So here's how I do that. So first I double check. Okay, my words are still centered like I want them to be. Now, here it's like you can't tell. There's not lines. So when I come back to my canvas color, I'm going to have to play with it for a second. I need to change this because when it's white, I won't be able to see it. So I'm going to change it to black for just a minute. And when I change my canvas color to transparent, you can see all these little squares. And it may seem like a real pain in the backside to count them up. But that's what I do. And again, if I was using something else, I know it would be a lot easier. Okay, so I want to make sure that it's right in the center there so it's 50 little squares across 
So halfway, 25. And then I'm ready to go. So I'm going to change this color back to white. I'm going to double check, make sure I like it. Like so. I am thinking about dropping it down a little bit because this is going to be really close to the top, like up here. And I want it dropped a bit. So I'm going to apply this for just a second and drop this down a teensy bit. It's going to be kind of big on the face of the shirt, though. You know, but I'm going with it. Drop that down a bit. I mean, the only other option is for me to make it smaller, to make it the lines between it smaller, and I don't want to do that because the font I think is going to need to be a bit bigger. So now we'll make it transparent. I'm going to save, and then I will do the inverse to create it um, for a light colored shirt as well. Then I will come over and resize those two. Where did they go? There they go? I'll select both of them. When I open them in preview, again, I'll select them both and adjust size. It's going to drive me nuts. Okay, adjust size. And this will change, the, change it for both of them. Uh oh, that's not right. 5400 and 300 over here. And go. So now I've got this one, I've got this one. So let me save and save. So I can do all of these at once. Save. And this gives me, you know, the chance to see, ooh, I uploaded the wrong one here, to see which is going to be the better seller. The better seller. Okie dokie. So subjunctive mood expresses hypothetical and conditional expressions. So, all right. I'm going to keep that. I'm looking for... <laughs> That's cute. If you get some grammar in your eye, you'll, you'll catch subjunctive-itis. That's cute. But that's the kind of stuff I look for, so, I mean, that might be something to run with. And I could see some other things to do with subjunctive stuff. Indicative. Okay. So then, what I do is I'm looking now for keywords, right? So I don't need this anymore. I don't really need this anymore. Hypothetical, that's a good way to look at it. Now I want to come back. Did I close out? Okay, trust me, I'm a linguist. So I'm going to look at these shirts, not to copy, but I'm opening them up into tabs to take a peek at like what title they used, what keywords they used. Again, not to copy, just to kind of get an idea of what direction to go in. So I was planning on calling my linguist shirts, so that's similar. I will not do this. Um, this is like keyword stuffing down here. So semantics is something I'll, I'll add in. Funny, linguistics, and, okay, pragmatics, yes. Um, all right, so there's some words there. So he's got a different font house tease. Okay, that's his title. So he's got a better, you know, um, he's written it as sentences, which is more correct. You know what I mean? Again, this one, perfect Halloween costume or Christmas. Okay, no. no, no, no. I'm, I'm looking for keywords that I might use to create. Look, mom, dad, brother, husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, Christmas, birthday, Valentine's Day. No, that's not helping me. Librarian, maybe. Linguist, yes. Okay, looks there's a keyword I could use. Um, technical writer, linguist, translator. I don't know that a translator would need my shirt. All around poly, polyglot. I'm going to have to look that one up because that might be a word I, I could use too. So I don't, I just want to make sure I'm not keyword stuffing, but I want to use words and fit them into a sentence. You know what I mean? Put them into a sentence. So, okay, I got those pulled up, and now I'm ready to roll. So I'm probably going to start my shirt out at $16.99. So th I, this way I have them all in a step together. Let me just roll with it. And they go together. All right, so I'm going to call my brand Linguist Shirts. Title of the project. I'm in a sub 
nude shirt. I've already put linguist up top, so mm, just I like to add a little bit more to my title, so thinker shirt. Because <laughs> you're thinking, right? You're thinking. And then I will do the same over here. Copy and paste. Now I won't always do all four short shirts the same. Generally there'll be two that are the same, you know, the light and the dark variation. And then the other two, the pair, you know, will be the same. So now I've got this ready to go. Down here I'll start typing in um, to figure out how I'm going to squeeze in some of these keywords that I liked over here. What was one that I liked? I liked, let's see, we've already got linguists, linguistics. So what I have so far is, let's see where I put it. Um, got a contemplative thinker or linguist, linguistic student in your life or just a good old, just a good old grammar police stickler? This subjunctive shirt is perfect for the, and this is where I'll enter in some more keywords that I see. Let's see, linguists, I guess, you know, I don't need police, students, geeks, nerds, writing grammarians, or professor. Maybe professor, you know, over here. Let's see, law enforcement, structure, season, early. Okay, there was a word, lexographer. So I want to make sure that that word might fit. So let's see what that is. Maybe a whole new, a person who compiles dictionaries. Mm, maybe not. Uh, you know, you could always throw it in there. How many people compile dictionaries? Maybe lots. Polyglot. Let's look up polyglot and see what exactly that is. Let's see. Polyglot. Knowing or using several languages. Mm, possibly. I mean, that might be something you just throw in, like, but I don't want to keyword stuff. I want to be really. Okay, pragmatic. Pragmatics, yeah. Or that pragmatic professor. Here we go. Let's throw that in. Where'd you go? This subjunctive shirt is perfect for the pragmatic professor. If I can spell professor right. And that might be all I want to put. I uh, got a contemplative thinker or linguistic student in your life. Um, or just a good old grammar police stickler. This subjunctive shirt is perfect for the pragmatic professor. So I will copy that, paste that here, and then I'll just paste it over here as well. So I will drop that in up there. I'm going to come over and add it into my keyword features over here, and then I'll be done. And we will save. Save that. Okay, so now I have my four shirts up for the day. I'm in the subjunctive mood. We'll see how they do. Um, again, they, it may be hit or miss with these. They may really do okay, or they may not. There may be some that sit, but I'm willing to take a chance there because it's not, there are no shirts that have subjunctive in it on Amazon that are on merch that I found. Um, and then the linguist, you know, niche only had like a handful of shirts there. So that's what I look for, things that are a little narrower and just kind of try to go into those smaller categories, niches, and pinpoint smaller areas that um, could serve people that don't have a lot of shirts out there for them. So I will be back again showing you the shirt I was planning on creating that had to do with the bird watching um, smaller niche because I have all the work done for it. So I'm going to go ahead and create that video as well, but I wanted to let you know that this was something that just came this morning and I thought, let's do it. Um, because that's generally what I do. I'll get an idea, I'll hear something, see something, and just think, okay, let's run with that. Let's see where that, that takes us. And again, as I was doing this research, looking up things for this um, subjective uh, subjunctive shirt, I saw some other areas that I'm like, oh, I could go check that out. Let me go down this area and, and see what I can find uh, for those things. 
Okay, so thanks so much for watching, you guys. Give this video a thumbs up if you found at least something helpful in it. Uh, and if not, that's fine too. And if you would love to leave a comment down below, I'd love to hear what you have to say about the video, about tips you might have, and check out what others are saying down there because frequently there's a lot of really great discussions going on and you can learn a lot. I know I do. Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Thank you.